Welcome to Try Not to Overthink It, where we explore the intricate landscape of mental health, well-being, and everyday life. I'm RJ. I'm Unique. Join us as we dive into insightful conversations, expert perspectives, and share personal stories that shed light on the various dimensions of mental wellness. For either you're seeking guidance, inspiration, or a deeper understanding of the human mind, this podcast is your safe space to engage, learn, and navigate the journey to a happier, healthier self. If this is your first time here, please make sure that you like, share, subscribe, and turn your notifications on so you won't miss any episodes. So today we are going to talk about the topic of choosing yourself. Um, I thought it was very important for us as therapists to actually delve into this topic and speak on this topic because for a lot of people, they spend a lot of time, a lot of time, excuse me, choosing everyone else and everything else and don't spend as much time choosing themselves, which is mm -hmm. where a lot of people tend to find themselves in bad spots. What do you think, you knew? Um, I totally agree. I think that um, when it comes to, actually, I'm not even going to be philosophical with this. I, I disagree. Uh, I was like, I think I was talking to my husband about this and growing up, you know, you just always see like the mom moving and grooving and taking care of things or just your parents in general taking care of things, but rarely do you see them pouring into yourself. Uh, or into themselves, right? If you if you come from a good home, most of us who grew up in who are millennials or grew up um, in the eighties and nineties or earlier, we're used to seeing our parents hustle and grind, but not really see them pour back into themselves. Um, that was just the norm, like that. That's what's expected. Like you just you go go go. But then one of the like content creators that I follow, she takes a kind of like staycation once a month. Well, yeah, once a month, every month. And she'll just like rent a hotel room for the night and take some time away from her kids. She's married. She has three kids, but she takes that time away. And I was just like, I really applaud her for that because this is someone who is very busy, is very successful, um, is very family oriented, but still needs to take time away so that she can continue to pour out from a full cup instead of pouring out from an empty cup. And I was like, that's something that I could learn from because I have a hard time doing that. Um, I think I wear so many different hats that I forget to put back on the hat that is me, mm -hmm. right? And taking care of me. So it'll it's nothing for me to be like, oh, my kid needs a pair of shoes. I'm going to go buy a pair of shoes. Meanwhile, I've had the same shoes for like three years. Um, and these are shoes that I use pretty much every day. Not saying that anything's wrong with those shoes, but that same effort, I want to be able to teach my kid, hey, it's good and important and necessary to prioritize you and make sure you're good before you're just trying to help everybody else. I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. I think that for a lot of us, we forget that th we we forget the importance of self care. We mm -hmm. um, we forget that taking care of your physical, your emotional, your mental well being is foundational in in having a fulfilling and long life. I think that mm -hmm. for me, and I'm 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 bad about that as well in regards to. Um, not always being able to balance, you know, and, and I like like what you said about pouring from an empty cup. For a lot of us, we will do that. We will pour and pour and pour and pour and pour from ourselves until eventually there's nothing else to pour from. And you become less effective. You become mm -hmm. less aware um, when you are empty versus when you're full. I mean, it's no different than if you're driving a car. When your car runs out of gas, it's not going nowhere. Yeah, and it's and and it's not useful. Mm -hmm. As good as that car could be, right? You could get a top of the line car, um, great on gas. Like it could just be a sweet, sweet deal. But if that baby is sitting on E, or if you have an electric car, right? I don't care how much it passes the admissions test because it's it's a battery. Mm -hmm. If it's on E, whether gas or electric, it's not a good car anymore. <laughs> It's not. <laughs> it is not performing at its optimal functionality. It is useless if you do not keep it full or keep it to the point where its functions are able to be utilized to its full capacity. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that another important thing is being able to set boundaries, being able to set the boundaries, um, mm. you know, and establish and maintain healthy boundaries in your relationships and who you interact with and working to protect your time and energy is, is just as important as well. I think mm -hmm. that for, for me, I was bad about that. I was a person mm -hmm. that hated to tell people no. I hated to, because I felt like I was disappointing people. Um, I would hate to not be able to come through for people because um, I felt like I was just letting them down in some kind of way. But mm -hmm. what I started to realize was the more I was willing to give, other people were willing to take. Mm -hmm. And you have some people where as much as, as good of a heart as you have and as as good of a person you are to them, they're just willing to suck it all up. Mm -hmm. And when you have those loose boundaries, which then, which then ultimately turn into no boundaries, you see yourself becoming that empty cup very quickly because you burn out. Um, or you find yourself being in a situation where, like we've talked about Risa Tisa on this show before, where there were things that you recognized were not a good idea. But because you didn't have those clear set boundaries, people just walked all over you and they took advantage of you or they play in your, they play in your face. And mm -hmm. I think that that is, is very important. I, ha I had to personally learn that lesson um, the hard way, because again, I've, I'm a person where anything that we talk about on the show, these are things that we have personally, we personally done. We've mm -hmm. either personally done, we personally survived, um, or we have, you know, firsthand experience with these things. And so for me, not having those boundaries in place didn't allow me to always choose myself. I chose other people, which then other people, most of us intrinsically were selfish and we could be a little self-serving. So they're like, hey, you're giving it to me. I'm just going to keep taking it. Well, yeah, I think a lot of that is taught, right, as mm -hmm. children, um, because we come from, most of us come from parents who were just doing the best that they could with the best that they had, right? And so a lot of times you learn how to operate with people from your earliest examples, which may have been stress responses, right? Mm -hmm. So if we talked, you were just talking about people pleasing, right? You wouldn't probably classify yourself as uh, you know, flat out people pleaser, but those, you had some mannerisms that were people pleasing in the, in the thinking of, you know, I don't want to disappoint. I want to just, you know, make sure that I'm doing my part. I'm pouring into my community. And while those are great characteristics, right, we have to look at it and say, am I giving from abundance? or lack and most of the time we're giving from lack right mm -hmm. if we are if we're thinking those thoughts of i don't want to disappoint people that's my automatic thought but that automatic thought could also be a stress response yeah that can be something that we notice and learn how to not lean into our stress responses and lean into a more um mindful or calm response right so the opposite of the stress response that may come about that says I have to keep showing up because I don't want people to think poorly of me. A calmer version of that would say, I think highly of myself. And while I would like to be present, I may not have the capacity to show up in that manner. And that's okay. I'm not going to be able to show up every time for everything. And that's not realistic. That's not humanly possible. Um, and it's not necessary in order for me to maintain being a good person. Right. But these, like I was saying before, these are things that we are taught as children. Way, oh, it goes way back to when kids hit each other. What's the first thing adults say, tell kids to do? Tell the teacher. No, 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 no. It's just kids. They come and tell the teacher and the teacher tries, makes the kids do what? Say they're sorry. Say you're sorry. Mm -hmm. Well, you've not given me any room to think or talk about what happened there. It may have been self-defense. Maybe that kid hit the other kid, right? And they're like, mm -hmm. hey, I'm defending my territory or this person came and they violated my space and I, I'm defending myself. What Gather what happened first and then say, okay, how do you want to navigate this space? Maybe sorry isn't always just the best answer, right? Maybe it's, hey, let's respect the person's boundaries. I I have some 
um, was work, was with my nephews, and the older brother was antagonizing the younger brother. And so the younger brother, because he's smaller, you know, and younger, he retaliated in a way that was seemingly aggressive. And so the mom hadn't seen the whole thing and was just like, don't do that to your brother. I said, well, hold up. I said, because the older brother is antagonizing the younger brother. She was like, wow, that's, yeah, he does that. I've seen him do that. I was like, yeah, he's antagonizing the younger brother. And so the younger brother was kind of just defending himself and got loud because he's like, when I'm quiet, you don't listen. And mm-hmm. so I said, well, he's not wrong. I told the older brother, I said, he's not wrong for defending himself. You need to leave him alone, respect his boundaries. He communicated them quietly. And then he had to become aggressive when you were aggressively pushing up on him. He was assertive and communicating. I don't like that, right? And so you can't make it aggressive because now it feels threatening. Well, no, you you were hurting him. And he said, stop. So sometimes, right, it's better to give kids that permission to say, what's really going on here? Because one day they will be adults and they will have to have that autonomy to say, I didn't like that. Or I'm not able to do that. That's not something that feels nice to me or that is just I can't do right now I may be able to do it at a different time I may have been able to do that before but I'm not at that same place I don't have that same capacity like I used to one of the things that I that you know I've learned and that I encourage my my clients to do at times is to listen to their inner voice a lot of times you have inner voice be screwed up it do (laughs) it does it does. Sometimes sometimes your inner voice can lead you astray. Um, but on, for a vast majority of us, I feel like we will sometimes get those warning signs, those warning clarions or the the, the warning alerts. And we will just, yep. hey, nah, I'm going I'm to hit snooze on that alarm. Mm-hmm. And not recognizing that that is your brain making you aware that certain things don't line up. And so trying you to should save. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's where for me I, I've I've had to tell my clients like sometimes you recognize when two and two is not making four, yeah. you recognize that this isn't the math isn't math in here, mm-hmm. and if the math isn't math in here and you recognize the math isn't math in here, you might need to move a little bit differently. Now yeah. some people, you know, they're going to learn the hard way. You know, my dad calls it a graphic illustration. Some people got to you know learn that the stove is hot by touching, putting their hand up there and getting burned. Whereas other people. I can learn just from someone telling me that that's not a good idea. And with choosing yourself, sometimes you have to stop. And this is something that you've always talked about, Unique, is sometimes, you know, sitting and marinating on things or sitting and meditating on things, not just rushing to a conclusion or rushing to a decision. I think that for a lot of us, myself included, because I eventually had to outgrow this as well, of just doing stuff without really thinking about things. Um, By, I think that. Like I tell my clients, by sitting down and just trusting yourself and believing in yourself, you will, in most cases, not lead yourself wrong. You will not lead yourself astray. You will not put yourself in a compromised position if you are truly trusting yourself and you are operating in a space that is healthy and conducive to you being the best version of yourself. Mm-hmm. I think that for most of us, you know, the lack of boundaries, the not trusting ourselves, um, because we haven't overcome past traumas, you know, mm-hmm. we find ourselves we're just rinsing and repeating, mm-hmm. rinsing and repeating. And I, and you know, cause I was having this conversation with one of my coworkers the other day, just going through a divorce. And so as I explained to her, I said, you know, cause she was, we're talking about it. And I was like, the signs were there that your marriage was over with. Mm-hmm. And she's like, what you mean? I said, the signs were there. Like all of the signs that your marriage was over with all the signs of, you know, his infidelity were there. And she's like, how you figure? I said, because I said, when you stop and think about it, right? When you marry somebody, I I would think that when you marry somebody, you you know them, know them before you walk down the aisle, jump the broom, however you get married. You know this person. So when you know this person and then the patterns switch up, especially for, for us as guys. Right. Us as guys, I'm let, you know, our, our female listeners in on a little secret. Us as guys, we're very simple. We're very simple. We're very pattern oriented. We're very regimented in our thought process. We're very logical. A has to fall into B. B has to fall into C. Things have to make things have to make sense to us. 
which is why we're not the best when it comes to cheating Mm -hmm. because we have predictable patterns that we tend to follow. Mm -hmm. So when you're, you're with a guy and he doesn't care about how he looks. And then all of a sudden he gets his haircut every week. He got, he's smelling good. He looking good, (laughs) ma'am. Miss Mamas, <laughs> check yourself. He, he might be, he might be getting a little attention. Mm-hmm. You so know, somebody so, telling him he look good. Exactly, ain't you, Miss Mama? And and so when you are not aware of those patterns, you're, you know, the signs were there, and a lot of times we will recognize that there are signs, there are patterns. But like in the case of you know Risa Tisa, she said that in her very first episode, all the re- all the red flags were there, but. She 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 ignored them and she didn't listen to her inner voice. But see, this is the thing, right? When you're talking about the inner voice, I think just even capitalizing on the inner voice is important because sometimes your inner voice is not your voice, right? Mm-hmm. This is where the concept of reparenting comes in. You guys, when we say go to therapy, I, I know we're both therapists and we, we make a living from doing therapy. But I, even if I wasn't a therapist, I would wholeheartedly recommend going to therapy. In therapy, even if you just go for a checkup once a quarter, it is important to go and just check in to see how you're processing things. Is this truly the way that is best for you? And just having a non-biased opinion in the room to say, this is what I think. Am I making sense? Like, did that just make sense to you when you heard it? Sometimes, and I was just talking about this with a client, right? That inner voice gets wounded. And when our inner voice gets wounded, right? Due to mistrust, due to abuse, due to neglect, um, all of those things can really wound or start to silence or cause your inner voice to be overactive, right? You, we all know that person who's just like, I don't trust nobody because why don't they trust anybody? They, they, no one just starts off that way. They, they became that way because they didn't listen to their inner voice when it was speaking. And so now it's loud where it says everything is a danger. And that inner voice now is a mystery. You can't really trust that inner voice because you kind of made it overly sensitive. Our inner voice is to be able to weed out the good and the bad, not just to cancel out everybody. So, but that had to come from, again, like you were talking about healing those past traumas. I started talking about reparenting. Reparenting is recognizing that sometimes our caregiver or parent voices may not have been the best providers for us, right? Yeah. While they were our providers and they're not bad people, let me say that again, they're not bad people, right? But the voice that you needed or the caregiver or parent that you needed, they may not have emotionally been able to provide that for you. And so you grow up thinking, oh, I'm fat. Oh, I'm ugly. Oh, I'm not that smart. Or dang, I always just mess up. I'm always just doing the wrong thing. When in all actuality, that's not your voice, right? That's that person who may have poured into the poured that into you. So you have to really think, is my inner voice kind? Is it leading me to better? Is it protecting me from harm? Is it helping me be my best self? If it's not doing those things, you may need to do some work on your inner voice so that it can be those things, right? You can build that self-esteem. You can establish healthy boundaries because boundaries on the other side, I tell people a barrier is not healthy either. If you're mm-hmm. blocking out everything, that's not a, ba- that's not boundary. That's, that's called a, wall. a barrier, right? That's a wall. It's keeping everybody out, but you cannot do life like that. You have to have people in order to do life. You mm-hmm. have to learn to be interdependent on people. That means I need you. You need me. We're both giving to each other in a healthy amount where no one's taking more than the other person has to offer. The importance of having a healthy inner voice helps you to know, okay, I can go this far and no further. Mm -hmm. They can come this far and no further. And when it starts to feel uncomfortable, I have the autonomy 
and the know-how to protect myself. Listen, guys, you do yourself a favor. And even if you just, if you're not ready for therapy yet, I understand that. Starting a therapeutic relationship can feel a bit challenging. And I'm going to put this one in there for a little commercial. Maybe we can have um, a podcast episode about choosing the right therapist and how to navigate that space and starting a mental health journey. Maybe we could talk about that here. But if you are not ready for that, look up books on some of the stuff we're talking about. There are a lot of good self-help books on the market. Our our old teacher, Dr. Annie Wells, would say, get any book on the subject. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> she would just bless her heart. She was from a different uh <laughs> a different time of teaching. But mm-hmm. Annie would tell us each semester for class, we're gonna talk about this subject, and you can buy any any book in the in the in the library or any book in the bookstore about this we're like well what's the test gonna be on the stuff that's in the book well which book all of them (laughs) she did do that and now that i am i have been practicing in the field for over a decade she wasn't wrong (laughs) no she wasn't (laughs) all of the books talk about all of the things. It just may have a little bit more information here, a little bit more information there, but the concepts and the baseline ish, the baseline information is the same. You want to talk, you want to learn about boundaries? Get any book on boundaries. If it's written by a psychologist, psychotherapist, counselor, it's going to have sound information. If you want to learn about reparenting? Get any book on reparenting that's written by a mental health professional. It's going to be sound information. If you want to learn about valuing yourself and building self-worth and self-esteem? Anybody can give you a good starting ground. It's not going to be personalized. That's what therapy is for. But they're going to give you the basis of knowing, okay, where do I start with this? And probably give you some questions and guides on what where to start with your individualized therapist. Yeah, I, I see. I, I like that. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, I think that for, you know, for a lot of us, you have to give yourself that ability to embrace your personal growth. Mm-hmm. You have to invest in yourself. Because um, my mom used to say this um, when I was a child, nobody's going to care about you more than you care about yourself. Mm. Mm. And so when you are choosing you, you know, something such as therapy becomes invaluable because you get Mm -hmm. to unpack some of your thoughts. You get to unpack Mm -hmm. some of those feelings, uh, some of those emotions that you've been carrying with you. Because for some of us, we carry things with us for decades, for years, for months. And don't even know it. And don't even realize it. it. Mm -hmm. Don't even realize why why you respond the way that you do, why you Mm -hmm. think the way that you think, um, why you respond to things the way that you do. Like you don't know because again, you've never taken the time to take the minute to pause and to just unpack things. And I think that like when you're doing something such as therapy, you know, people, people have this misconception of, you know, and I tell people this all the time. Part of our jobs as therapists is also education, you know, because you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. You know, I spend more time educating people about treatment modalities, medication regimens, um, medication affordability, insurance plans, than I do anything else. That is not probably a good 70 to 80 percent of my job is the actual education piece, because when people know better, they do better. Just imagine when you were a child, you know, at four or five learning how to tie your shoe. Mm -hmm. You know, if you didn't know how to tie your shoe, you're running along, you trip over shoelace. Mm -hmm. But then now you can put your shoes on, tie them bad boys up. There's multiple yeah. different ways you can tie shoes. You good to go. Unless you like me, you t- you trip with the shoestring tie. God damn it! God damn it. <laughs> I got um, too tall before. I got taller, you know, before I if I could defeat the coordination. Oh my gosh. Yes. But I knew I how to tie my shoe. You know, if you like me, some people would had their shoes tied and was still tripping. Still tripping. But that's all right. I didn't. I didn't master it. Now I didn't master keeping my shoes tied and walking and running without tripping and falling. Without tripping and falling, I ain't hurt myself in a long time. Okay. Of falling. I think See? that, 
like I said, like for most of us, you know, not having the avenue or the opportunity to unpack those things Mm -hmm. and then Mm -hmm. just celebrating the small victories. It doesn't always have to be something major, something life changing. It can be something Everything is major. Everything is life changing. It don't, if your eyelash falls out, your life changed. It, it might not be significant life changes. You get what I'm saying? It's not a memorable life change. But dang it, anybody ever got an eyelash stuck in their eye? Boy, oh you be gosh. sitting there furious. Like, <laughs> it changed it. It changed your life for a couple seconds. Oh okay, I got thick eyelashes. So that's the problem for me. And when I get that bad boy out, I am feeling much better. I am relieved. I, I say that as a little jokey joke, but in all seriousness, I mean, while it is not going to be life altering, it, mm-hmm. it did change my life for a couple seconds. Yeah. Right. And then I, I can remember that how the effects of an eyelash getting inside my eye as opposed to me getting that bad boy out. Anybody ever get a paper cut like up under your arm or something? Something just, you know, random. You'd be like, how paper did I cuts even- are the worst. God, how did I even get that there? <laughs> like, yeah. What was I doing that I got that there? Boy, you'd be just pissed because everything, it, it, it'll be that very moment when you got to wear long sleeve or put a coat on or something. And he'd be like, <laughs> you just want to fight? Mm-hmm. But as soon as that bad boy heals, boy, you be rubbing that thing in the mirror like, because you was just acting up. Mm-hmm. It's a celebratory moment. The more you get used to celebrating those small things, right? When you get that big promotion or you finish that degree or you get into that, that, that long-term relationship or you buy that house, right? Or you get, you rent that apartment, your, that first apartment or, or the apartment by yourself or whatever, whatever those big moments are. You will be so appreciative and show so much more gratitude because just like, man, I remember getting the application. I remember when I got the credit approval. I remember when they gave me the key. And it's just like, I did all of those things up to here. So when you have those bad days, so they come. Bad days are a part of life. When the bad days come and, they, and we are not feeling like a shiny penny, mm-hmm. we're reminded, nah. I'm amazing. Yep. That's not me trying to toot my own horn or like try to be out here thinking I'm better than anyone else. I think everybody's amazing in their own right. I'm just amazing. And Mm -hmm. when it comes to me standing on my square, baby, I'm shining on that bad boy. If you don't like to shine on your square, that's that's a you thing, but I'm going to shine on mine, even on my bad day. I'm still going to shine. The sun still is up, even when it's raining. We might not be able to see it, but it's up there. As long as it's daylight, the sun is shining. As long as I my eyes are open, I'm a shine. It might not be as bright every day, but I'm a shine. Okay? So I think that's important. Celebrating you, getting in the habit of celebrating you. If you look good that day, be like, oh, I look amazing. My husband jokes on me because he's I don't I don't say, babe, do I look good? Mm-mm. That's not how I when I when I want to gauge other people's interactions of me. I walk out and say, babe, I look good, don't I? He said, how? Unique, how you start to compliment giving yourself a compliment? Are you asking me that if you look good or are you telling me? I said, both. Yes. <laughs> he said, Unique. I said, yeah, I, I know I look good. I was just saying, if you see that, you know I look good. He said, well, that doesn't even make sense. I said, it, it's okay. Because I already know I look good. I was just saying if you could see what I could see. See, that, that, it doesn't make sense. It does. You got to start, you got to start with you're amazing. If you yeah. wait for somebody else to tell you you're amazing, child, you'll be waiting your whole life. Yeah, die. Yeah, that's true. You got to be your own I, biggest I, cheerleader. I start off with, I, I am her. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, the degree of what that her is, it varies. <laughs> and because I'm a lady, it really varies on what my hair looks like. Oh my okay? gosh. <laughs> <laughs> She said what my hair looked like. If my hair just ain't that, I'd be like, ooh, I'm her. But baby, we got we got a little a little distance to go. Ooh. <laughs> right? But when that hair is done, baby, and that skin is right. Mm-hmm. It ain't too much nobody could tell me. Yeah, I, I think that 
something something that just came to my mind was you know being able to let go of guilt as well oh like for a lot of us we start to think that because i'm putting me first you know not feel guilty because i'm being selfish you know <laughs> choosing you is not necessarily selfish and something it, it, it is but it's not it is because sometimes you you have to put a pause on the other things that are going on around you in order for you to make yourself a priority. And that's not always a bad thing. If you're choosing you at the cost of harming someone else, that's when becomes intentionally selfish. harming someone else, that's selfish. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if you are choosing you and it and it disrupts someone's equilibrium because of their own choices, mm -hmm. that's a them problem. Yep, that's a that's a that's a them problem. For instance, right? Because God, I think just given God give a little example, Raja. It's like okay, I'll say I'll tell a real life story. My homeboy says he go he likes to go on vacation and he doesn't mind going with the group, but he likes going by himself because he doesn't have to worry about other people, right? And just people trying to drag down the trip. He said he went on a trip and he was with like his homegirls and um I probably think it was like some guys and stuff too. He's like, so the homegirls, they wanted to sleep in and they they just was wanting to get up late, do all of this type of stuff. So he booked excursions, went out. By the time the group met back up, everybody was like, Yo, what you get what you got into? Where you been at? And so my homeboy was like, Oh, I was doing this, I was doing that, I was doing this. They were like, Well, why you ain't call us? He was like Nah, y'all y'all had the same opportunities I had. Why did I have to sacrifice having a good time when you guys put whatever y'all wanted to do first? Like, you had the same opportunity. I'm not taking anything away from you by me enjoying myself on this trip. I spent money to come on this trip. I'm going to enjoy it. You may say you spent money on this trip and you're going to relax and rest. I say, you know, he wasn't wrong. Neither people were wrong. The people who wanted to stay in, his homegirls who wanted to just chill and relax, they weren't wrong. Neither was he wrong for saying, no, nah, I'm going to go out and I'm going to just explore this place for all that it has to offer. And they may have looked at him like, oh, yo, you being selfish. How? You had the same hours in your day as me and you are in the same location as me. Mm -hmm. We have the same. <laughs> we 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 looked at the same itineraries. You could have decided to do something different with your day. You just chose not to. So that's that's kind of. I wanted to put an example to what you're saying because I think people be like, yeah, that's better in theory, but what does that actually look like? You you made a choice. Don't penalize me because I chose something different. Yeah, I definitely think that it. it there, there becomes a point in time where you have to start evaluating your relationships. You have to start evaluating what you are pouring your time into, what you are, you know, because the thing is, and I tell people this all the time, time is a finite resource. The hmm. moment you come in this world out of your mother, hmm. your, your clock is ticking. Tick, so tick, you got to make every minute, every hour, every day count. And if things are not pouring into you, they're not adding, they're not multiplying in your life, they're doing the exact opposite. They're subtracting and dividing mm -hmm. out of it. And when you are choosing yourself, you are betting on yourself, you are wagering the house on yourself. Yep. yep. You know, again, you'll start to kind of see who's really in your corner and who's who and who's not. Mm -hmm. The the first time you tell somebody no, that's going to let you know right then and there if that's the person that needs to continue to be in your circle yes. or somebody who doesn't yes. need to be. Because a yes. person that is truly in your circle, truly supposed to be in your circle, when they hear you say no, they understand. There's no, there's not going to be a drawn out explanation that needs to be provided. There's not going to be an a, a, a exposition that needs to be written. They'll understand. They'll, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. But someone who you have to make it make sense to them. Those aren't people that really are in your corner. They're choosing them at your expense. Mm -hmm. And it, by you not choosing yourself, you are, instead of making yourself a priority, a priority or at least putting them on the same level as yourself in, a, in the priority scheme, you are putting yourself beneath them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, 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 I, and I said this on previous episodes before, 
Everyone does not deserve to sit at your table. Everyone does not you know, deserve to you know, hear I your story. That. You know that's uh, <laughs> you know I believe in that because everybody everybody can't get the same experience. Yeah, and you and, have to pay a different. It's a different. It's a different cost. We we just we just I just went through this with uh, one of, one of my coworkers that I mentor, and so you know she had a run in with the law, and people she thought was her friends. Boy, they couldn't wait. See there? Because we have this See thing. There? Excuse me. We have this thing here in Alabama called Jail View, where you can see people when they get arrested and what they got arrested for. So people couldn't wait. People that have been sitting in her face, they they eat together, they go out together, they spend time together, they get their nails done together. You see they, what I'm saying? They at each other's houses all saying? the time. You know, these people. As soon as she caught a charge, boy, they couldn't wait. To tell don't do me no favors. Oh. Don't do me no type of favors. If that's the type of friends you want to be, don't do me no freaking favors. So I don't need you to be that kind of friend to me. When when I when I found out about it, I immediately messaged her. Hey, I need you to come see me. We right. we got we got to have a serious conversation. So she she came and we talked about it. And like I told her to her face, I'm not one of those people that's gonna talk about you behind your back. I'm gonna say whatever I'm gonna say to your face because I want you to know I said it. I, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking to you. Mm -hmm. That's a difference. And, you know, like the next day, like we talked for about a good 30 plus minutes. And the next day she texted me. She was like, I appreciate you for being honest with me and, 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 and telling me not what I wanted to hear, but what I needed to hear. And like I told her, you need to stay focused on your purpose. Stay focused on what you're supposed to be doing and be very mindful that you have people who are toxic influences where they were your friends today, and the moment you was down, they put their foot on your neck. They were never your friends. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You Most definitely. Who, who, who want to be associated and acquainted with you because they see something in you that's desirable and that they can gain something from. But it ain't everybody's gain is not going to be for your benefit. Sometimes people's, uh, someone else's gain is at your detriment. Absolutely. Because this girl, she didn't get, she didn't had a little. Uh, a minute where she was down and these people use it as a minute to as something to step up in the social and and to step up their social capital mm, yeah see look she thought she was good she thought she was that look at her look at what she got going on no never mind the context of how she got in her situation mm -hmm. that that's not what's being shared no absolutely right? not but it's just like mm, she she quick to talk about somebody else but look at her Right? Yeah, and 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 that and that that was the thing that I that I expressed to her is like sometimes like God will bring you into a situation to reveal things to you that you otherwise wouldn't you otherwise wouldn't have, you would you otherwise wouldn't have been open to receiving. Come on, right, right. You know, so God brought you to the situation. Yes, it's unfortunate, you know, but He brought you to the situation to show you that these people really ain't your friends. These people you think your sisters, your friends, well, y'all yeah. hanging out like that. Y'all will use anything because people are like, well, God brought me to it. I don't think so. I think sometimes our own sinful ways bring us to it. Absolutely, God, will, God will use any and everything. He's Absolutely. like, oh, we we about to use this. Nothing. I tell people, nothing is wasted with God. Absolutely. That broken marriage, that broken relationship, them awful friends, that loss of money, that come up of money, that loss of a child, um, whatever you you name it, anything under heaven, God will use it. Nothing is wasted on Him. So that opportunity could say you out here living like you don't think consequences are real. Mm -hmm. Look, look where we at. What you learn from this? Where are you mm -hmm. going with it? You you clearly not living in purpose because if you're living according to purpose, you ain't getting in trouble like people who not. You better say that again. You're just not, and that's not to say that everything is going to be go is going to go your way. No, but when you do find yourself under fire and under attack, people will be confused. They will literally be like, "How are they in trouble for that?" Yeah, like, that don't even make sense. Like, wow. <sighs> Who, what that happened? don't even like, that somebody, don't even sound like them. It don't even sound like them. They had somebody had to do something. Somebody it's giving sabotage. Who's sabotaging? Yep. And then your elevation because you you know because you were on the side of right because you were operating in purpose. God elevates you into places where they like yo. 
dang, look at their come up. They lost this job, but dang, they over there doing big things. Mm -hmm. I didn't get that. Whoa. You know, dang, that re they really came back with something that was 10 times greater. Yeah, because you're operating in purpose. So sometimes God has to show us, look, I will, I can keep or remove whatever I need to. The The goal is for you to operate in your purpose and to give God the glory. That's right. So, you know, and even in talking about, because we were, we we're talking about just taking care of yourself. If you are not locked in with a higher power, like me and Raja, we believe in God, right? But everybody mm -hmm. don't, and I'm not knocking nobody for that. Right. But if you're not pouring into yourself in some type of way every single day, locking in with some type of positivity, mm -hmm. you're missing out. You absolutely That's are. the first step of self care. If you're not journaling, right? That journaling is not for everybody. But if you're not sitting doing some reflection, sitting doing some type of gratitude, sitting reading reading a positive message for the day it don't have to be the bible it don't have to be a devotion but there are so many positive messages on the internet i mean i read so many positive quotes instead of following the shame follow positive quotes daily positive quotes and get that i oh. unfollowed them i unfollowed like some of those apps for personal reasons i said they don't they don't bring anything that's edifying nope Empty they don't, calories. They don't, right. I, I don't I don't gain anything from having them on my feed. Nope. So I was like, let me eliminate them. I, I'm about positivity. I'm about light. I'm about growth. And so I was like, I need to follow people who are, are about that, who's gonna pour into my cup when it's time for unique to to be edified. So when I open up my app, I'm seeing positive quotes for the day. I'm seeing a daily scripture. I'm seeing people's devotions. I'm seeing moms and stuff about marriage. And I'm like, wow, just that little change, right? Helps my day feel so much lighter. Instead of seeing some nonsense, I'm like, why did they even post that? Like, that's just so dumb. It's it, right? it, that it, self care. And instantly starts going down because i'm just like i'm upset now i'm fussing about the people driving slow in front of me i'm fussing because my kid is getting in the car slow and it's just like where did that even come from that negativity i put in there earlier mm -hmm. right and then we're talking about oh i want to be elevated i want to be this and then god is like but every chance you get every quiet moment you get you fill it with something negative Getting your nails and hair and buying clothes and taking lavish trips, all of those things are nice. They are all nice. Mm -hmm. But those are not the only ways that we can practice self care. Self care is cleaning up your house, right? Mm -hmm. Getting the duster out. People are like, child, dusting. Yeah, just taking your duster and dusting around your house. Self care is getting a cup of tea, right? Putting your phone on do not disturb for a couple of hours and just sitting there drinking a cup of tea. If you if you drink something a little stronger, a little glass of something nice, that's gonna keep you right. Sitting, taking a bath, taking a few extra minutes in the shower. I know water is expensive. I know things are high, right? Mm -hmm. But two more minutes in the shower ain't gonna change your water bill that much. Okay? Stay in that shower one day for two two extra minutes. Buy the little, um, they have these, it's like a bath bomb, but it's for your shower. So for people who don't like to take baths, they have these little shower bombs and they have them in all type of um, aromatherapy scents. Raja, when I tell you, you feel like you're at the spa, my guy, you put that little eucalyptus tea tree one up in there. Baby, mm -hmm. close your eyes. You don't know nothing. You don't know nothing. You don't know nobody. You hear me? But you feel mm -hmm. better. When I've had a stressful day, man, I put one of them in the shower and just sit up in that bad boy. And just be thinking, Brian, be like, what you doing? Oh, <laughs> you out there? <laughs> That's self-care too. Sometimes, you know, we think it has to be expensive. Nah. That's the opposite of self-care. Self-care are the daily little things you can do to keep yourself regulated so that you can appreciate the big things. Absolutely.
I, I, I just think that, you know, like at times we can overthink things. Oh, we can yeah. overthink things and overcomplicate things and make things oh, super yeah. convoluted. And choosing yourself is it's very simple. It mm-hmm. starts with saying yes to yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes and sometimes even no. Like yeah. for me, I like I'm a person I love sweets. You know, but yeah. I can't eat sweets every day. I can't eat chocolate cake bacon. every day. You know, like being yeah, I like bacon too. But you know, being being African American, I can't eat I can't eat chocolate cake every day. Because guess Amen. what? I, after a while, you know, I may not I may not be able to have extremities. Yeah, forget, <laughs> forget being African American. Being over thirty, yeah, you just can't do them things no more. Nah, you can't. So sometimes you have to. Sometimes you have to do what you have to do the things that you need to do, not always what you want to do. And so that you can do what you want to do. Exactly. And I and I tell people that all the time. Like, there's a time and a place for everything. Come on. I'm a lot of times what we want to do is we want to do what we want to do at the beginning. And then mm-hmm. at the at the tail end, now I gotta do what I got. Now I have to do what I have to do. No, when you do more. Exactly. You're having to work three and four times as hard. Whereas you can, whereas initially you should have done what you were supposed to do from the very beginning. That way you can lay up and do what you want to do later. Come on, lay up. And so when, when you're, when you're choosing yourself, you're choosing to make the things that are important, the things that are going to impact you, not just in this minute, but the next minute and the minute after that, the day after that, the week after that, you're choosing to make those things important. You're choosing to set yourself up to win. And not mm-hmm. to just be existing. Mm-hmm. Because too many of us, and I say this all the time, too many of us, you know, because like uh, my, the, one of the psychiatrists I used to work with back in the day, he used to ask every morning, you know, how are you guys doing? And I'm like, I'm okay. He said, okay, why well, just okay? It's like, I'm just feeling okay. He was like, well, a blade of grass is okay. And look what happens to that. A mushroom is okay. <laughs> you know, but he's right. He's right. You know, a blade of grass is existing. It goes from one day to the next day to until it gets chopped. Until it gets chopped. And then the next day and the next day until it gets chopped again. Whereas human beings, we're meant to experience everything that life has to offer. The vibrance, the colors, the senses, the smells, the feelings. When you are choosing yourself, you are living life at its fullest. You're not just surviving from one day to the next. You're not just existing like a blade of grass or a mushroom or an amoeba of some kind, yep. you know? Yep. And as Unique alluded to, it doesn't always have to be over the top. It doesn't have to be a circus. It doesn't have to be a festival or a big to do. Sometimes it's something as simple as choosing to put, like for me, I get my hair cut the same day, the same time every week. That's choosing me. It can be something as simple as that. I'm getting my hair cut because I'm make sure my, can, my can face. Can I sign up? Can I sign up? Yeah. I'm going to just get my hair done. The same time, the same place, every week, but on your dime. But on my dime? Why got to be on my dime? Because I'm choosing me and me can't afford that. So <laughs> Listen, but in choosing me, I'm saying no. <laughs> I'm saying no. I'm choosing me and volunteering you. Mm-hmm. Hmm? Yeah. Nah, we ain't going with that. Right. They ain't going. They ain't going. I had to try it. I had I to mean, choose me. I had I mean, to choose me, Lucius. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I you got to do me first, Lucius. Sometimes you got to do it. Sometimes you got to do that. And, <laughs> you know, one, I'm, I'm, you know, it's funny you said that, though. But, like, in choosing yourself and putting yourself first, sometimes you do have to slice off relationships because everybody ain't going to be okay with you You're choosing you. Me you better come nah, I'm not. I mean, she on there now. She, she's like a barnacle. We, she on there. We've already tried. We've tried that, ladies and gentlemen. We did, but it didn't work. Nah, she grew back. We're stuck. I grew back. She grew back. <laughs> she if grew you don't, back if like you don't particle. watch us, if you don't watch us on the podcast, please tune in this time for the facial <laughs> she, expressions. She grew back. Grew back like a barnacle. Ah, that had to be an after dark episode of how. I wasn't the one who grew back, but um, hmm. but <laughs> woo. Sometimes they, we just thank God for grace, yes, and forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Okay, that that's what we will say. We thank God for grace and forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but some sometimes people are not always going to be happy with you choosing yourself. No, you just got to be okay with that. You got to be okay with that. 
And that is where um, being resilient comes in. Because not everyone's gonna, not everyone's gonna understand. Not everyone's gonna be able to see. Not everyone's going to be able to be in in the space to be able to encourage you to be the best version of yourself. You better Marie Condry them jokers and be like, "Thank you so much for the time that we had." I yep. release you now. But sometimes you gotta be you gotta be savage like that. I release you to a better purpose because yep. you no longer serve a purpose for me. Hmm. Hmm. You got to release them. You got the Marie Condry there behind. I don't know you, if I said that name right, but you yeah, look up on uh, Netflix. Sometimes you, you have to do that. Gratitude. You, you have to do that because, again, no one should stand in the way of you living your most authentic, your most authentic not. life. And healthy. And yeah. they're not. <laughs> if, people, if people truly care about you and they, they're truly supposed to be there occupying, occupying that spot on the team, on the roster, or sitting sitting around the table, they will understand you being the most authentic and healthy version of yourself. Yeah. They would encourage that. They're, they would applaud gonna that. that. They're going to want that because you being the best version of you benefits me. Yep. <laughs> That's taking, I think if you thought of self-care, self-care is probably one of the most self selfless things you can do because if you have an empty if you have a full cup everybody around you benefits from that Absolutely. when i'm having a good day everybody benefits from me having a good day when i'm having a bad day well everybody knows oh dang something's off with you mm. golly even when i'm sleepy when i'm sleepy i'm not my best self when I'm mm-hmm. full, when I've gotten a good sleep and I ate a good meal, oh baby, you going the the unique you're gonna get. Raja will tell you, I am very energetic. Okay, I may not be loud with my All mouth. I'm not a loud person verbally, but my personality is very loud. Okay, from the outfits to just my movement, I'm very very charismatic. But he also could tell you when I am off, like when I am not myself, oh boy, it is like someone has just turned the light switch off and you're like, why did it get dark in here? Yep. <laughs> it's, so you having adequate self-care and pouring into your own cup literally is a kiss to everyone else. Mm-hmm. Because you, been- they, they benefit they benefit from you being the best, the best version of yourself. Because the thing about it though is like, and I, I tell my clients this all the time, I call it the spirit of influence. We all have a bubble that surrounds us. Whenever my bubble overlaps and touches yours, the things I say, the things that I do start to impact you. And the things you say and the things you do start to impact me. You'll see people, if they spend enough time together, they start saying, saying things that the other one says. Mm-hmm. They start thinking things that the other person was thinking. Mm-hmm. You know, you start to have a taste for certain foods because you spend enough time around certain people. I'm never having a Baconator. Don't, don't. I'm trying, I'm trying to get her to do it. I'm trying to get her to do it. She don't know what she missed. I will never be influenced by I'm that. I'm trying to, I'm trying, I'm trying to influence her to yeah. try a Baconator never. at least one time, at least one time. Not with my vegan self. No. At least one time. Trying, trying, trying every day. Every time we talk, you, the, your the life will be better with a Baconator. The burger comes out with the Baconator, then I got you. Okay. We're we going for it. We're going for it. I'm going to be looking too. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for it too. But, but those, those things are so minute, but people don't really factor into how the much they, are not minute. they, are they, huge. cause they're big players in, yeah. in, in just your happiness and overall well being. right? Those are the big deals. We mm-hmm. don't see them as the big deals, but they are the big deals. They are the shape shifters in the room. If my sphere of influence is off, I'm off. Mm -hmm. If I am not around people who are pouring into me, who are positive, who are uplifting, I'm going to be off. I don't care. I'm just going to be off. That's a big deal. Yeah. Big money people hang out with big money people. Not so they could talk about money because I know you're going to understand my perspective. I'm not hanging with people who don't have no money. Exactly. You don't understand my problems. You don't understand my perspective. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're not even speaking the same language at that we're point. We're not. We're just not. And 
when when like I said, when you're when you are a full cup, you know, you're able to pour into other people's lives. Yeah. And I'm not much more effectively. Empty cups. Exactly. Once I get my cup full, I'm probably not gonna hang out with a bunch of empty cups. Because mm-hmm. y'all had me the last time. You got yep. me. Okay. You ain't gonna get me again. No. I need to hang out with some full cups so that look, hey. I might have poured out. I may have volunteered over here. There are a lot of things that are naturally going to take things out of our cup. Mm -hmm. Just waking up every day as an adult, it's going to take some things out of your cup. Okay? Absolutely. Especially if you live in America, baby. Mm -hmm. Your cup going to get a little... It's going to be about a quarter of that bad boy missing Mm -hmm. just by hitting them feet on the ground. So... Being in a room with a bunch of empty people is not going to help. I need to be in a room with a bunch of people who got three quarters of a cup. Because at least if they pour something in, we all pouring, it's a good chance that we all might be back full again. Yep. I don't know. What what the heck do we know, Raja? We're just your neighborhood mental health therapist. What the heck do we know? Trying to make Trying to make everyone's lives better. We just got a couple degrees on the wall and a few licenses spread out amongst us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> are you foolish. So we are going to end the conversation there. This is Try Not to Overthink It signing out. I'm RJ. I'm Unique. And if you like what you heard and like what you saw, we ask that you uh, like, share, subscribe, turn your notifications on on the YouTube channel. Um, Again, you know, your help, your support cannot be overstated enough. We love you guys who are a part of this journey. And anybody who joins and gets on gets on the journey with us, we appreciate you just as much. Um, if you would prefer to listen to us instead of watch us, I don't know why you would. Because we are great looking people. Don't do that this episode. What? Don't do that? Not no, don't do that this episode. Don't just listen. Watch us. Yeah, watch us too. Watch us too, because we we are some very good looking people. We are. You know, I'm gorgeous. My mommy and daddy made this. Listen, and I am fantastic, okay? (laughs) And I'm (laughs) sun-kissed. So we can be found on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, um, Audible, pretty much anywhere you can get your audio files we can be located and listened to. Um, Also, please do not forget to... uh, Follow us on Instagram and TikTok. The links will be uh, uh, put down below. But this is us signing out, and we will catch you next time. Peace.